we are very happy to welcome Tim back again. And do, do you know what? That was one of the most exciting moments of my entire <laughs> career. I thought, <laughs> and once we'd done that interview, I thought, how do you ever, how do you possibly top this? Talking to someone in space. A hundred billion people who have ever lived, 557 have been to space. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't your first choice for a career. No, it wasn't. I mean, I started out as a teenager. I was absolutely passionate about flying. Uh, and so I applied to join the Army Air Corps and I was very fortunate to get through that selection and spent 18 years having a fantastic career as a, as a military pilot. Yeah. And it was really the, the latter stage of my career, once I qualified as a test pilot, mm -hmm. that really opened the door to then applying to the astronaut corps and did you uh, when when you were applied how how much were you aware because this is all it all mm -hmm. in the book here the european space agency the selection test book first time this has really been seen to this degree mm -hmm. yeah. were you aware what you were getting yourself into and how hard it was going to be not really uh, and that's part of the reason for writing the book i think there is really to demystify the whole process of how we select astronauts and and what we expect of astronauts and and more importantly Importantly, the next generation, which is going to be fascinating, mm -hmm. looking at returning to the moon and then going on to missions to Mars. And they're the skills we need from the next bunch of recruits. What, what was your biggest struggle? Um, in terms of the actual training, mm. it was learning Russian. Uh, I came from a very technical, scientific background, mm -hmm. and so I didn't really have a problem with those aspects. But languages were never my strong mm -hmm. point, so learning Russian was, uh, was really quite hard. But, but, I mean, this is learning Russian potentially to save your life. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I mean, in the Soyuz spacecraft, only Russian is spoken. All the documentation is in Russian. Um, and on board the space station, I had to help my two Russian colleagues do a spacewalk, so get them out safely. I might not be able to do this. You nearly walked at that stage. No, I, during the training, the great thing about it is they're very, very patient and very good. So mm -hmm. um, if somebody's struggling in one area, then the space agencies will put resources in to help you. So I went through the language course the same as my other colleagues and, and got to the required level. Mm. Um, but it was just the area that so I was a, Was there. there a moment where you thought, no, 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 no? N never, but I think that the moment I felt the hardest in terms of the selection process was in the very early stages when, when they're testing what we call the hard skills. And mm -hmm. again, the, the book's kind of broken down into the selection process and how we went through. And the hard skills are the, those kind of non-trainable skills. You've either got it or you haven't to some oh. degree. Very, very intensive day. Um, a whole bunch of tests thrown at you, mostly computer-based, uh, testing things like concentration, memory retention, spatial awareness, um, and all of these, these these kind of aspects uh, and I found that very challenging. Well you've got a little test for us in a, in a minute. Um, uh, one <laughs> of the luck. ones is, is, in the, uh, is in the gyroscope and you uh, what you have to so explain the test before we show what we've done explain the test. Okay, so uh, gyroscopes we sometimes use in, in our uh, selection and training mm -hmm. process. Uh, it helps to acclimatise you to some of the uh, sort, of, uh, uh, sort of perception that you might have in space. I mean, for example, when we're re-entering Earth's atmosphere, the spacecraft is tumbling for the initial stages, uh, fairly out of control. And at that same time, you're also having to focus and concentrate in the spacecraft on what the systems are doing and getting ready for re-entry. So we're asking people to have uh, mentally, you know, demanding skills at the same time when there, there are physical challenges. Yeah. So what the gyroscope does is it puts you in an environment where you're unfamiliar with, you've mm -hmm. certainly got physical challenges, but at the same time you need to have good mental processes. We asked our runner, Matt, uh, to get in the gyroscope this morning and he was given a set of numbers which he then had to recite backwards. Right. Um, and, and the worrying thing was that when, he, when we put him in there, he said, I'm really looking forward to going in the kaleidoscope. <laughs> <laughs> we were really concerned So we that thought point. maybe his selection process had failed at that point he then went sorry sorry I meant the gyroscope <laughs> no 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 so anyway here he is in the gyroscope uh, trying to uh, recite those numbers backwards Oh my goodness, it's like a roller coaster! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Actually, did all right at the beginning there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Not material. Absolutely, he was doing very well to begin with, like you say. Yeah. So with, with some training and, and acclimatization, I'm sure he'll get very good at that. And knowing what he's actually going into. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, show us, uh, show us what we've got. So uh, this is where we're going to fail. So yeah. we're taking the Mickey out of him. Now it's our, <laughs> yeah, now it's our, it's our turn to fail hideously. Well, well here's, here's just a uh, sort of simple test on on visual spatial awareness. And spatial awareness is really important for us to be aware of our surroundings. Um, so I'm going to show you a tray of items for 10 seconds and then cover it up and then I'm going to show you a second tray and on the second tray three items have been removed so right. your job is to just work out what three items have been removed. And the great thing is here we're working as a team which <laughs> you're not allowed to do normally. <laughs> yeah. Not normally. Okay, okay. okay ready so yeah. 10 seconds starts now. Three, two, one. Okay that's it. Okay. Right. Yeah. So now for the reveal, let's find out what three items have been removed. A um, ring. Yeah, the ring is gone. Um, there was a. Oh God. <laughs> the ring. No, hang this on. The ring. Not very well at all, have we? The spoon is there. The spoon is there. The pen is, the pen there. is there. The tea Scissors bag is there. there. The tea bag is there. There was that. There was. Um, Phil. <laughs> oh no, we're rubbish. <laughs> that much. No, the funny thing is, you, you've got the hardest one the first. Hoop. The hoop. Because it was hidden under there. Yeah. Um, oh, no, we failed. We failed miserably. <laughs> we failed. We failed. But it's the pressure of being on TV. Yeah, okay, okay, let's, let's have is. a look and compare. Oh, oh the headphones! Oh, the biggest one! Oh, <laughs> it's the oh, headphones and no, the headphones. And the almonds. And the almonds. As headphones well. oh, and almonds. I knew yeah. that. And, and what's interesting, actually, is, is you know, situational awareness is, is not just visual, but it's, it's all of our senses. And uh, our brain actually processes sound 100 times faster mm. than vision. And it's amazing how much sp uh, situational awareness we pick up yeah. by just sound as well. And that's really important on board the space station if you're hearing things that aren't quite right. What, um, what would you say? Because I know that one of the key things for you going into space was to encourage schools and young people you know, into science mm -hmm. yes. and maybe the next generation of our, of our young British astronauts. What would you say to them? What's it, what, what, what will they get out of it? Um, I mean, the, the great thing is that by studying subjects like science and maths is it just opens doors and it gives you opportunities. Um, and, and it's not just becoming an astronaut, but there are thousands of careers that, that, that those subjects can really help with. Um, and I think it's really important to encourage you know, younger children to make the right choices so that they have these opportunities in the future. Mm -hmm. And in particular for women as well, we're, we're finding that lots of women aren't taking sort of STEM-based subjects mm -hmm. and they're later on in, in life not having the same opportunities to go through those careers. What did it do for you then? I mean, is your life ever the same after you've witnessed something like that? Um, you, no, your li life is never the same. It's a very privileged position to be mm -hmm. in, to go and look at Earth from space and to work on the International Space Station. And, and hopefully there'll be a another mission back. Um, it does change your perspective, definitely, on, on our planet. Mm. It really makes you appreciate how fragile our atmosphere is. I mean, it's tiny when you, when you see that thin strip. Uh, and when you look out the other direction in the universe, you realise that we're just alone on Spaceship Earth. And, and we need to look after our planet. So incredible, I just, isn't I could, it? I just wish you were here all day. I, I, I may have forgotten what was on that tray, but I do remember where your book was. There it is. <laughs> and the good I, thing is it's, that it's here. There and we that go. is uh, that's a great book. Any budding astronauts, that's a great one for Christmas. Thank you, Tim. It's we, really lovely to see you. To, we need to Thank read that. We need to, we need to study that. <laughs> we need to study that. <laughs> Goodness me. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you.